Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the dork side. It is I, your friendly neighborhood dork in the woods. And today I want to talk to you about my dual sport slash adventure slash logging road exploration slash anytime I'm out in the woods by myself gear. As you can see, uh, I carry a decent amount of gear with me when I go riding in the woods by myself. The idea is I want to be able to handle any minor issues that come up and then be able to communicate uh, if necessary to deal with anything major and or be prepared if necessary to spend the night in the woods. That would not be my first choice obviously and I think I've got enough stuff to get me home but it's good to have a backup for your backup and honestly um, some of that stuff is just fun to play with when you're up here so it's kind of nice to have it on me. I carry my gear in three places really on the bike. So I have a Tusk Fender bag, runs about $20 and it comes with, what's cool is for that price it comes with tire irons as you can see in case you need to change a tire, which also gives some rigidity to the pouch, so I like that. We'll talk about what's in it in a minute. I carry a backpack. This is my, it's an Ozark Trail hydration pack, and there's some gear in there. And then I have this Cortec tail bag, which I originally bought for my CB500F, which I don't have anymore. Don't need it for the Versus because it has side cases, and so I've repurposed it, and I use it on the rack on the back of my CRF. Not what it's designed for necessarily, but it gets the job done. I'm hoping to uh, upgrade to some Giant Loop or Wolfman bags at some point. This is a Cortec tail bag. It's Sturdy, very sturdy, which I like. It's got a rain cover, which you may have seen in some videos that I put on when we're in muddy or wet conditions. It's gotten very dusty, obviously, over the years. Let's start with the, with the tail bag. So here's what I keep in my tail bag. First, you have to unzip it, okay? Very nice tail bag. So um, there's a lot of stuff in here. I like to have everything I need to change a tire, for sure, and then a bunch of random shit just for emergencies or, like I said, playing around. So this is a tarp. It's 10 by 12. It's a, uh, it's a nylon tarp like the same material your tent is made out of, basically. And there's a hunk of paracord in there too. And this is for shelter building. Either if I had to stay in the woods overnight, I could make myself a run a ridge line and make myself a shelter or a lean to. Or just like if I want to throw up some shade, if I was chilling in the woods at some time, these are so easy to put up and take down. I just carry it with me because it's lightweight and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Oh, but it falls down easy, so that's fun. I don't know about using the bike as a table. We'll give it a try. A couple other things I carry. This is my Silky Gomboy. So if you saw my video about five reasons why the dual sport should be your first motorcycle, you saw why I carry this. All right, obstacle in the path. Gee, what's in your bag? I'm so glad you asked. Do you have anything that could solve this problem? I do. Silky Gomboy, baby. Check this shit out. Fallen tree, no problem when you've got a Silky Gomboy in your motorcycle bag. Done. Done. Just gotta make a little door big enough for me and the CRF. Done. Oh yeah, piece of cake. It cuts incredibly fast, it's super lightweight, and very small, packs down really small. So this thing does incredibly well. This is good for clearing trail. Obviously I can't carry a chainsaw on this bike. It's also good if I wanted to make a fire sometime. It's good for gathering firewood. Either make a fire just for messing around chilling in the woods, or if I had to make one to survive, I'd have that to make, make, make fire, get wood. So that's exciting. This is my Bear Grylls survival knife. Laugh if you want, but these are actually really good knives, full tang knives. It's a very sharp blade. It's got a hammer pommel, so it's got a bunch of tools that could be useful. I don't like carrying it though, because it's so ostentatious and, and orange, so I have a, I have a Mora bushcraft that I actually use when I'm camping and hiking and stuff. But I keep this in this bag. It's also got a fire steel, so it's nice to have a backup to your backup fire making. And then there's a sharpening stone on the back of it and a little bit more paracord here just for shelter building or whatever I might need it for. First aid kit, little first aid kit. This is mostly band-aids, um, but there's some antiseptic and some sunscreen and some ibuprofen and a few things in there that I've had to use on trips in the past. No big deal. This is my MSR extra long tow cable for motorcycles. Thanks to Duck Fan for getting me that for Christmas, I think, a couple years ago. Never had to have it out of the bag. That's why it still fits in there, but that's there for when we're riding together. I don't always take this tire gauge with me. It's left over from when we went trail riding, but it's nice if you want to air down to have some idea what you're airing down to. And this one has digits that go way down so you can actually know when you get super low. If I was going ultra light, obviously I wouldn't take that with me. This is a cable so I can charge my phone. Zip ties, just for fixing random things. And here's some bigger zip ties. I carry a crescent wrench because, you know, it fits on all kinds of size nuts. Also got a few survival tools. This is a uh, life straw that I got on Amazon on Prime Day last year for $10. So my hydration pack has, I don't know, a liter of water or two liters of water. So this isn't backup to the backup. This thing, because you have to like stick it directly into the stream. If I were to be stuck in the woods and found a water source, I could fill up that pouch and then drink out of it with this straw. This thing weighs nothing, takes up very little space. So I just throw it in here for peace of mind. Also got a lighter in here. It's just a lighter. It makes fire. It's pretty exciting. Making fire is important. So I've got the lighter and a fire steel for making fire. This is my mini compressor. It's got a cigarette lighter plug, but it also has this thing. 
So I can just plug it directly into the connector for my USB charger on my bike and then power the pump and air up my tires if need be. So if you popped a slow leak or something, this would be nice to have. You could stop and air up once in a while. Or if I aired way down and then I was like, oh crap, the highway's here, uh, I could air back up for riding on the highway. <laughs> this thing is not a survival thing at all. This is my hammock. So I can just keep this in case I'm riding up here and I want to just chill for a little while. It's nice to have the hammock. So I don't always take this, but I have it today. Just thought I might find a cool spot. And it helps fill up the bag, which I like. That's everything in the rear bag. And this is, you know, my loadout for today. Uh, most of this stuff I take with me all the time, but please don't take this as a comprehensive everything you have to have in the woods. This is just what I have right now and what I carry, just to give you some ideas if you're not sure what you might need or what you might want to take with you into the woods. So in the fender bag, as I mentioned, I've got two tire irons, okay? There's one here and one there, okay? They work. I, have, I put both of these tires on using them. So that's important if you get tools like that to actually use them if you can so that you know how in the woods. I didn't enjoy it and it wasn't easy and I don't look forward to the idea of doing it again, but I do know how to use them. And then inside this bag, I keep a few things. Um, I actually have a bigger tire iron, axle wrench for the back. It's a 24 millimeter. That's what the back of this takes. So I keep that in there. So I actually have three tire irons, which is helpful I learned when I was replacing the tires. And then all the wrenches I need to take a tire off, two for the back and then the two for the front, the bigger ones, and one, there's a smaller wrench in here that is for the, uh, for the smaller nuts on the sides of the axle up here. So I got all four wrenches I need to take a tire off and in there, I'm not gonna take it out because you know what it looks like, but this is an inner tube. So an extra tube. This is a front tube, but a front tube can be used in the rear in a pinch and it doesn't work the other way because it's not big enough to go in the front. It wouldn't be safe to ride on the highway. I wouldn't, you know, use it extensively, but it'd be enough to get you back to the truck or back to the road, out of the woods anyway. So I have everything I need, theoretically. Take a tire off, replace the tube, put the tire back on, fill up the tube and ride down and check and make sure I have all the right inflation and everything so I can get that done. On the bike, I don't, I don't have a bunch of stuff, but I do have my phones. You should have a GPS and a backup. So what I have is two GPSs because my phone, I've downloaded offline all of Western Oregon and Google Maps, so I can use it as a GPS even when I don't have cell phone service. So I keep that and I usually fully charge it and I have the charger cable back here. So that's why my phone is on here. I use it for a GPS when I'm navigating. Sometimes I'll look at Google Maps, find spots I want to go to and then ride to them. But also I just like to have it handy. Right there is nice because I can pop it off, take a picture and pop it back on without taking my gloves off, taking it out of my pocket. That's what's on the bike. Really nothing else major other than the bags that are attached to it. This is my backpack, the final thing that I carry. So this is a hydration pack. As you can see, I always fill it up before I leave and try to drink lots of water when I'm out riding. That's important. Inside this, I keep a few things. This is batteries for the GoPro. That's important. I've got, ooh, this is important. This is my uh, Delorme InReach Explorer. And this is a satellite communicator and a GPS unit. So I got this one on clearance, so I only paid a couple hundred bucks for it. But Garmin bought them, and so they're a little bit more expensive now. DuckFan has the newer one. And I'll put a link in the description to all this stuff. But this thing, I can send text messages just to my wife via satellite wherever I am. And I have a GPS so that I can figure out where I am. It can also get weather reports for you. It just costs you, you know, one of your messages. It's like $15 a month to have this thing activated. And it has an SOS button. So if I got like fell down a cliff, broke my leg and was dying, I can hit that and they'll send the cavalry. But you can still talk to them. So they don't automatically send a helicopter like a LPB or a PLB, personal locator beacon. LPB is low ping bastard. Remember that from the 90s? They'll text you. And so if you're able to respond, you can be like, hey, broken leg, need tow truck and ambulance versus you know, no response equals here comes helicopter. So this thing, and the battery lasts forever, forever. I charge this thing up like once a year, I swear, because I just keep it off. I always check it before I leave, but 89% and I haven't really charged it. And I've used it like four times lately. So I keep this, I always have this with me when I'm in the woods, uh, camping, hiking, just driving around. If I'm out of cell phone service, I have that thing with me. That is my first line of defense. That makes it so I don't need any of the other shit I have. It's also some dork in the road stickers in there, but you don't care about that. Unless you do, and if you do, send me a send me a message with your address, uh, and I will send you a sticker. One other pouch on this thing that I keep stuff in. So you're always supposed to bring food when you go in the woods. So I put way too many almonds in this bag today, but I got some almonds and some cheese, which is getting soft. I probably should have put that in a cooler. One, I just like to have a snack, and two, you're supposed to bring extra food in case you get stuck overnight or whatever. Keeps your morale up, keeps your energy up. So I try to bring more food than I think I'll eat when I come up in the woods. And the other thing I never come in the woods by myself, or really at all without, is this. It's my, this is my Glock 26 in a DeSantis holster. This one, it fits perfectly right in the bottom of this bag in the holster, and the holster protects the trigger, so I like it. Uh, it's a little hard to get to, but I don't want to wear it on the bike, fall off, and land on it. So I like to just keep it in the bag. Just peace of mind right here. Peace of mind. It's always nice to have it when you're alone in the woods. And, you know, if you're out here and you want to squeeze off a few rounds, that's fun too. That is my dual sport adventuring setup. This is what 
I bring when, like today, I'm riding around logging roads, exploring, looking for camping sites by myself. When we go trail riding, I bring everything but throw it in the truck. So I have it at the campsite, but I don't necessarily need it on the trails because we don't go that far from camp. If you have any questions about the setup or the gear or where to find it or why I carry any of this crap or suggestions for what I could add to my kit, that would be interesting to me. Please leave them in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, don't forget to be excellent to each other. A thank you. Excellent! Thank you.